I mean, the minute I opened my eyes, this room was just filled with a cloud. And I realized that, man, you know, we take a little skip over the over the fence and, and you're in heaven. I mean, it's, it's just that close. Wow. The banquet table. This beautiful banquet table went on forever and ever and ever. It seemed like it went to the the outer reaches that there is such a thing. I mean, to be right to the edge of eternity. And everything is so eternal. It's not yesterday, the day, or tomorrow, anything. It's just eternal. It always has been, always will be, always is. People, you know, they weren't seated yet, but there were silver candle holders with golden candlesticks mm. and the finest of, you know, tableware, saucers, plate, you know, boom, fork knives. And it was all set in perfection. And Jesus was just to my left, right to stay on his right hand side. And uh, we were dressed almost as, as waiters in a restaurant, you know, the bow tie, white shirt, black coat, mm -hmm. black trousers, and the serving towel over our left arm. I saw this beautiful, I'm talking about exquisite, to perfection, not a hair out of place, this beautiful bride at the end of the table, even though it seems like it's, you know, across heaven or across eternity, your eyes automatically adjust mm -hmm. like a camera lens, and right. like back in the day, you know, and you know, click, click, and, and they're like up close, you know, where you can see. Right. And she's walked at the end of this banquet table, if there could be an end, there was a staircase. Everything was white, white staircase, white banisters, you know, handrails on the side. She's walking up. Beautiful white dress, raven black hair, beautiful long veil, and the train of her wedding dress spread out behind her so long and so far, and it fanned out mm. at the end. And it was filled with souls that looked like just everyday people. Mm. You know, little boys in their red shirts, their red tennis shoes and shorts, you know, boys, little girls mommies, daddies, uncles, aunts, cousins, you name it, families. And at that moment, I mean, and she was, as she was walking, ascending up the steps, was the throne, the throne of God and, and daddy, God the Father, and Jesus and, and Holy Spirit, you know, just emitting from them. Whew, I don't know if you guys need to take a pause and breathe this in, but boy, I sure do. Mm. Mm. Anyway, at that moment when I all this was going on, watching all of this, just in awe, man, I just felt myself almost being lifting up, lifting up, almost, you know, to the ceiling, through the ceiling, an aerial view of this stuff. Beautiful, I should call it stuff. I felt like I was just being lifted up. Mm. Out of your body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just lift it up. And yet still in a reclining position with the low table to my left. And Jesus at that point was reclining. And I was reclining next to him. And, and here's this just banquet table with every food and delight. Foods we, I mean, fruits we have no idea of colors we can't imagine, fragrances, senses, sights, man, I just, it's hard to put human words to this. And suddenly, to my left, I'm telling you, a, a crowd, layers of saints were walking up. And for you who are Catholic, Orthodox, whatever, canonized saints that you know of, St. Sarah from uh, St. Francis, the East and the West, the, the Orthodox, the Eastern churches, Europe, European, whatever, Eastern Europe, and Western, you know, the United States, the way we do things over here. But we were all one. Mm. I saw the whole 20-something years of my 
bishop for my time as a bishop fulfilled in that motto repair the breach wow and we were just one beautiful body family i'm not even going to call it a remnant you cannot put a number to the multitudes and myriads and layers of angels with their wings almost in, in a perfect circle around this banquet table and not like the tongue with the light stuff like you would think mm -hmm. and i would look up to the left to right, and all these saints are coming up to the side of the bed to this little table where jesus and i are reclining eating and then they began to step back as a priest would at the altar stepping back to make room for Jesus, our high priest, who lives ever to make intercession for us. Jesus, as Savior, Messiah, victim, conqueror, and king, offering himself at, at that altar, that holy altar. And the smoke of the incense was so sweet and just filled this cloud of the Lord's presence. So as he stepped back, all the people that the bride had in this long train of her wedding dress that she was taking up with her right to the throne to meet her spouse, Jesus, and to have this really public, beautiful marriage. You know, God the Father officiated it. Jesus was as, as handsome as he could be next to his bride. But as the saints stepped back, all just regular everyday people began to step forward and come up to our low table here at the end of the at this end of the banquet table and they were the same people little boys red shirts red tennis shoes uh -huh. mommies daddies uncles aunts sisters cousins wow. grandparents families and the holiest of the holy souls and made room for them to come up to the table and at that moment as I was going to say a while ago precisely the Holy Spirit spoke clearly and what he said was I mean in my heart mind spirit body and soul it just reverberated these are the unknown souls wow the unknown saints wow throughout the centuries the unknown martyrs gave it all and paid the ultimate price wow with crowns and palm branches in their arms. So the unknown souls, unknown saints, unknown martyrs, unknown virgins. And for those of you who would understand a confessor, one who confesses the faith, you would call it witness or testify, testimonies. They were so pure, so innocent. Mm. I mean, you used to tell me, Mother Claire, about Daddy, God our Father, mm -hmm. you know, Papa God, who we've all come to know in such a personal, intimate, interactive way mm -hmm. through Jesus by the power of his Holy Spirit. Daddy is Daddy. You can climb up on his lap. You can braid his beard. You can play with his... Um, he does have the heart of a child, just like you used to say 30-something years ago. I wrote that song, come to me, can't you see just how much I love you? That, that was, that song personified. I mean, this, it's, I'm still in it, it's still here, the cloud is so thick, you couldn't cut it with a knife. <laughs> yeah, it was God the Father that had come into my palace in heaven. And that song came to me right when he came out into the room and invited me to come into his embrace from across the room. That's where that song wow. came from. All I can tell you is the past few days have been hard, days and nights. Yeah. Really hard. You know, on every level of, of suffering that I've, I've ever experienced and more, all at the same time you know i'm laying here in sackcloth and I, I had put ashes on my head and i knew that i knew that i knew that this 10 days 
that the Lord consecrated as a time of mourning, not fasting. It's not a matter of eating or drinking in this case, but a 10-day period of mourning and repentance, deep, deep. And I, I mean, I've just been undone here for, oh, today's day six of the 10 days here. And you guys can, you know, go as the Holy Spirit leads you. And as always, put all this to prayer, bring it before the Lord. But it's so fantastical, so beyond, beyond what I thought I could even grasp of the experiences in heaven or anything like that. The most pure, the most grand, majestic wedding and wedding feast I have ever seen in my life. Hell, you're telling me for silver candlesticks with gold silver candles. candle holders uh -huh. golden candles wow. and the most exquisite of tableware plates, uh -huh. saucers cups, goblets, spoon, forks knives. I mean off the charts so I'm I've been laying here for the, for the past several days and nights totally undone just such a reverential respect so majestic so worshipful so praiseworthy pure praise pure worship then i pick up my guitar and i have no idea what it keeps developing but sharing that wonderful story. I know you've been having a lot of days like this. You were in heaven and with the Lord. Oh, thank God. And it's bearing so much fruit. Mm. Not only is the community on the mountain here in New Mexico, the southern Rocky Mountain Range, United States, a spirit of awe and grandeur. I just the smoke of the incense just adds to the cloud of his glory and his presence that mm. is saturates and permeates everything and everyone in eternity. And yet, there's no veil. And I've seen that only by the grace of God, whether it was in dreams or daydreams or whatever you want to call them, but I know, I've been transported directly to heaven. I mean, all I have to do is think about my palace and from there. Well, it's the same thing. The fruit that it's bearing around the middle of this 10 day consecrated period has been such a reverential awe. We've been snowed in for almost a week. And the snow is higher than the, than our heads and the windows, the windows or anything. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And still snowing. I thought, wow, Lord, there's a reason for this. It's almost like we're being capped and encapsulated. Right. By this, like a, a dome of pure white protection, grace. I don't know what it is. Right. But whether you are on your face before the Lord, whether you're struggling, 
how we had so many of you, all of us had been so beaten, so downcast and downtrodden. Almost all of us are rejects mm. that were looked over and, and walked over and had been for our, our whole walk with the Lord. We weren't on the praise team. We didn't get called in to record the the albums and stuff. You know, we might have added some music or sat in the background or whatever, but we, you know, it's kind of like... The little nobody. The, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Yeah. That is such a safe place to be. You don't have anything to defend or anything to prove. <laughs> and Simon... You love the Lord and that's all that's... That's what it's all about. You don't need to it's be recognized. An unfettered inebriation. I mean, you know, Pentecost, the, the guys are speaking in tongues and whatever, and all these different languages, and people are saying they're drunk. And it's like, we're not drunk. It's nine in the morning. Our bodies, our senses, our concepts of things, layer upon layer, up, down, side, I, I don't care where you look. It just goes on and on and on forever. I don't care what state you're in, be lifted up and be encouraged. We will always be learning. Daddy will, and Jesus and Holy Spirit, they are still creating. You have to say, they have a strong, creative, artistic side, right? <laughs> That's a little bias on my part, but will always be, that's the excitement of the adventure and discovery of the treasures when our daddy takes us out for an eternal day on a walkabout, you know? Yeah. And he creates and he lets us co-create with him and it's just amazing. 